DaVinci Resolve for iPad. I do not think I've ever ran to this desk as fast as this. As someone who is an expert in DaVinci Resolve, I've been using it for years now. I wanna dive into those handful of screenshots that we saw glimpses of Resolve for iPad and talk about what features are coming, what features are not coming, and that way we can properly set our expectations for when this app finally launches. Because we all know what happened when Photoshop was announced and then it launched and there were like barely any features that the full desktop version had. If you're new around here, welcome. Talk all things black magic. Apple products and general tech stuff that I just love and super get excited about. So if you want to join the community, make sure you get subscribed. So first of all, why? Why would Blackmagic care to port their Hollywood level professional software to an iPad? And why should we as consumers care? Because you may have a laptop lying around that already has DaVinci Resolve. Well, I believe there is a few reasons. One, of course, there's a situation where someone uh, has to pick one or the other, and there's a lot of benefits to having a iPad, especially if you like touch screen enabled apps. There is no touch enabled Mac. It's also huge, incredible news because everyone has been begging Apple to release a Final Cut for iPad version for years. As soon as this news launched, everyone was like, really Apple, you're literally going to feature and let another company beat you at potentially your own game, but that could be a whole other video. Thanks to Apple's press release, we can actually see the main screen of Resolve for iPad. The first big key thing is to look at the bottom of the image here at these two icons, because anyone who has used Resolve before knows that there are, I'm gonna test my knowledge here, media, cut, edit, fusion, color, fairlight, deliver, seven. Here we only see two icons, and I can tell you that the icon on the left is the cut page, and the icon on the right is the color page. So it looks like those are gonna be the primary day one launched features. Hopefully the other ones will get launched over time, but these two are the most important ones to start with, at least in my opinion. And so first let's talk about the cut page. I am so happy to see that it's not a fully dumbed down version. So we can see at the top left here, we have media. You're gonna be able to import through like your photos app, the files menu, that's pretty normal. Transitions, titles, and effects, again, all pretty standard. And then you have the sync button, which is the same as the sync bin on the full desktop version. So clearly multicam stuff is going to work. All right, so zooming out a little bit, we got our bin, we got our viewer, we have our timeline, and just like the cup page has, you kind of have your, your smaller timeline view, which I've always really appreciated, because at the bottom here, you can be super zoomed into your timeline working, but then right above that, you can kind of see where you're at in the project and quickly uh, use that top playhead to scrub to a totally different part of the project without having to like zoom in and out of your timeline a million times super helpful. Yeah, at the top right, you have your quick export settings, which isn't gonna be as intense as the deliver page, but just like the cut page has quick export options. You have the inspector, so you're gonna be able to resize clips and change opacity, all, all the basic clip adjustments. Tell you what, the one thing that I hate about the cut page, every single time I have a meeting with Blackmagic, I talk to them about this. On the main edit page, you can adjust the waveform height. And most of the time when I'm cutting down a roll like this, where I'm I'm just talking to camera or for anyone who does interviews, podcasts or something like that, you know that you don't even edit really looking at the video. You're just watching the audio waveforms, looking for the spaces that you need to remove or mistakes or, and the cut page has never had the ability to adjust the wave form size. I've always found that way too hard. That's why I don't use the cut page that often still. So I want to see if they fixed that or adjusted that in here. We'll see on that one. The bottom right, you can see a settings and a home icon. Settings one, I'm sure that's where you just set up your project timeline settings. But the home one, DaVinci Resolve operates off databases. So when you launch DaVinci Resolve on a computer, you see all of the projects within your database. Now this past year, they launched Blackmagic Cloud, which takes those database from a local idea to a cloud-based one. This is where I think it's going to be a game changer because this will allow people like me who have multiple different computers, if I can create a project in here, uh, maybe cut down my A roll in here, but then when I need to go into like fusion effects or something that this iPad uh, version may not have, I can just hop on my computer, open up DaVinci Resolve, and the projects will be immediately synced. Or since they have collaborative features, 
maybe that will be brought into here and you'll still be syncing the same database. So while someone is, you know, my wife's editing on my computer, I can be cutting down in here. And here we see our first glimpse of the color page. They took what was already objectively the greatest color grading software for computer. And it looks like they pretty much ported every feature that I can see over. We can at least know that they are not going to do some horrendous dumbed down version where you get like three basic wheels and then, oh, here's a little curve slider. This is the full color page from Resolve. You have all of your different wheels. It looks like you're gonna have your primaries. I can even see the HDR wheels in there. You're gonna have raw camera controls. <gasps> I don't know how it took me until just now literally recording this. Am I finally going to be able to use B-Raw clips on my iPad? Yeah, right, because it's black magic. How did, I, how did I not even think about that? I was just excited about the software in general. We have the, uh, I always forget the name of it, but it's like the color spider web thing, which is a fantastic feature I use all the time because it allows you to just select an, a color on your actual viewer and then take that color and move it around the color wheel to then adjust that color to any other color. Super powerful. You have your keyframing, you have all of your scopes. We can see our tabs for gallery, uh, LUTs that you're gonna be able to import. That'd be cool if they synced. Literally one of the best things about the Resolve color page is being able to grade one image and then uh, select that as a still and essentially apply that still to all the other clips that you want within that same scene. And it's very different than just like, copying and pasting a LUT or color matching like a lot of softwares do where it kind of looks at the colors closely. No, it copies and pastes the same exact node tree and it's super, super blurry. But on the right hand side, that second one in from the right does look like the node icon. And I mean, it'd be ridiculous. It's not gonna be layer based. Of course, it's gonna be nodes. So you'll be able to see all your color grading nodes. Do we get an image of that anywhere else in this video? Okay, right there before his finger covers it up, you can see in the top right, uh, they have effects. So there's definitely gonna be some fusion effects filters going on in here. For version one of this app, if they release everything that we've seen in these screenshots, I am beyond excited. It is not a full port from Resolve to here. We're only starting with the cut page and color page, but if you're gonna start somewhere, that is the place to start. But there's still some important questions to be asked that hopefully we learn uh, maybe later today or in the coming weeks, or hopefully when this gets released, hopefully not like next summer. How much is it going to be? Is it gonna be a standalone? They're not really of the subscription model type, so I'm not too worried about that. If I had to throw out a guess, no, you can get full DaVinci Resolve Studio for your computer for $2.99. So if I had to throw out a guess, I'm gonna say 50 bucks and it will be worth every single penny of that. Obviously, we'd love to know when it's coming. Teases like this can be hard because it could show up in the matter of days or weeks, or it could be something that Blackmagic goes, hey, glad you're all excited. Uh, it should ship like NAB 2023. You best believe whenever it does come out or if there's any more news update stuff, I'm gonna be making content about it. So make sure you're subscribed. But if you wanna quench your thirst a little bit and see how I turned my iPad into a Mac, kind of, check out this video over here and make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss out on those future videos. Appreciate you all, see you in the next one.